The pandemic gave way to chaos, and amidst the chaos, one among many factions rose to power, the Rikers of course. Inmates unleashed upon Manhattan, but coordinated by one single person, Larry Barrett. Who are the Rikers and who is Larry Barrett exactly? What is their story and what is their end goal? Let's find out. Between two sides of the city lies Riker Island, a piece of land reserved for the worst of the worst. Manhattan's main prison holds the most dangerous criminals. But how does one end up there? We're having a flashback. It's the time before the Green Fires pandemic. Larray Barrett is in custody, being questioned about a murder she committed. You claim the officer put you in a chokehold. It ain't a claim, that's a fact. And you felt it was appropriate to pull the gun you had hit it on your person? In self-defense, my client uh, feared for her life. And shot two officers, both family men incidentally, in the back of the head. Execution style at point-blank range. That is a curious kind of self-defense. You're smiling, Barrett. Something you want to share? Just having me a nice memory. You know, childhood. Nothing to do with shooting two innocent men in the back of the head. Just puppies and baby dolls. And flowers and all that shit. This is speculation, Detective. Let's stick to the facts. You know I ain't nothing but sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> Flash forward. The pandemic happens and authorities lose control over the city, which includes Rikers Island, allowing the convicts to escape and have free reign over Manhattan. How they escaped exactly is unknown. But from incident reports, we know that Larray Barrett had a not-so-secret admirer working in the prison, an administrator. Once the pandemic hit, he helped her and other Rikers escape, though it didn't end very well for him. You ain't no fucking lieutenant, man. I was right by her side. Bitch owes me. Big time. Do not let her hear you talk like that, fool. You got a death wish? How'd you get past security? Hostages? Barely any of those fool guards come to work since that shit hit the fan. Rest of them sick or run off. Easy to overpower them. Make them do what we wanted. Then we watch them bleed like the pigs they are. Some of those brothers weren't so bad. That's Larray for you. Where'd the fucking barge come from? You know that stupid ass administrator had a thing for her? She got him to do it all. Then, just when he saw he was gonna ride off the glory with his outlaw woman, she slit his throat. Shit. She is one stone cold bitch, isn't she? So they escaped Rikers Island. Once on the outside, food was a real problem for the Rikers. But Barrett had a guy on the outside who could take care of that problem. Press the star key to accept charges for this phone call from a prisoner at the Rikers Island Correctional Facility. Yo, this is Larray. What do you want from me? You know who I am. You know you can work for me? Or, well, you don't have a lot of choices. Look. I got no beef with you, okay? What do you want me to do? Good man. What I need you to do is simple. You hauled produce before you went on the inside, right? Yeah. My people need food. You're gonna find that food, and you're gonna give it to the people of my choosing. You get it? I tell you when and where. You keep it running. There ain't gonna be a lot left. Get creative. Find anything you can and bring it to me. Fuck. This isn't gonna be easy. I'm gonna need trucks, and I'm gonna need drivers. You'll have them. Deliveries start tomorrow. You hear me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I sure do. Rikers have different backgrounds, all coming from various gangs, but they have decided to unite under Larray Barrett. But the question rises, why these lawless convicts don't just simply overthrow her and take power? It's kind of their style. The reason is because Barrett gives them purpose. And she's also a mean son of a bitch. Rikers have two main goals. Their first is to take revenge upon those who have imprisoned them and anyone who worked with those people or simply people in a uniform. First focusing on police officers and later on the JTF. They seem to be making it a sport of murdering them in the most brutal ways possible. Dispatch is car 24, we have visual on unit 55, looks abandoned over. Mother oh! Christ! Shit, they're behind us! We got it, just go! Now, now! Dispatch, this is 
Car 24, we are open. After breaking out and killing surface men and women, they put on the clothes of these people as some form of sick irony. This is why they're not only dressed in their orange jumpsuit, but also in police uniforms. They wear protective body armor, police helmets and also their weapons. But it doesn't stop there. Also the first wave and second wave agents are targets. But, besides their vengeance, Baird gives them another purpose. To live like kings today, because there might not be a tomorrow. Don't act like a victim, just take what is yours and prosper. And anyone standing in your way? Well, just watch. When I was in Rikers, one of the girls got a hold of this pen. Stuck it right in the back of my head. So I took that pen and gave it right back to her. And wouldn't you know, it went straight through her eye, sliced open her cheek, or oh, ink all over the insides of her mouth. But that wasn't enough. So I cut the bitch's throat. And after I finished stabbing her, well, that was that. Your point? I don't do second chances. No! 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 The Rikers have no real agenda, except for opposing the JTF and the Strategic Homeland Division. Their first organized mission against the SHD was during the Times Square Power Relay mission. Between you and repairing the power transformer in Times Square are a few dozen Rikers to stop you. Not successfully though. After that event, we have the Rooftop Comms Relay mission, where Rikers had taken control over the communications mast. The JTF alone weren't enough to stop them, so additional help in the form of the SHD was brought in. The Rikers once again didn't stand a chance. Next, their eyes were set at the Warren Gate power plant. Before you can restore power to the city, we had to fight our way through waves of Rikers. Besides simply hindering the SHD, the Rikers didn't really have to seem another agenda. But if they can't take the power plant, no one can, so they decided to blow the place up unsuccessfully thanks to our actions. After that, the SHD had decided it was time to stop the Rikers once and for all. The JTF had launched a small assault on the Lexington Event Center, the home base of the Rikers, the goal being rescuing the hostages and cutting the head of the snake, with the snake being Larry Barrett of course. After clearing most of the building, Together, the SHD and the JTF stormed the main room where they were greeted by Larray Barrett, her trusty grenade launcher and her lieutenants. After that battle, Larray Barrett was defeated and the Rikers were scattered across Manhattan. That was until they took control of a surface-to-air missile in the Columbus Circle and shot down one of the helicopters that extracted loot from the Dark Zone. The SHD's mission was to retrieve the pilot, loot and take out the Rikers. Of course, once again successfully. Not long after, the Rikers were hired by a mysterious speaker to launch an assault on the quarantine center. Who this mysterious speaker was is unknown, and the Rikers were of course defeated. The final organized crime from the Rikers was a few months later in Stolen Signal. The Rikers had captured the Channel 93 Broadcast Center, a local television studio, which was previously run by the JTF. The mission was not only to rescue the hostages, but also to take back the station so the SHD could keep the civilians informed of the situation in Manhattan. This seemed to be the last organized mission by the Reich, only to be seen scattered about Manhattan. They are also on the west side pier of course looking for Keener, but more than that they don't seem to have planned. The Rikers are one of the more logical factions in game, according to 
myself. A pandemic hits, the public leaves them to die, they break out and act out their revenge on the city. I wish we could have had more of this backstory in actual campaign, because it's very interesting to see how Larray became leader of the Rikers and how they unleashed the vengeance on the city. But what did you think of Barrett's and the Rikers story? Let me know if you liked it or didn't, and of course give me a reason why in the comments down below. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, peace out.